So these are really interesting facts. And do you have any hope of trying to pick up any uh, causal effect? Do you have any program? I thought I remembered some time ago reading a paper on Chile and women's labor force participation and the entry of these nursery schools or daycare centers, and they didn't find much of an effect. But I don't remember very much more about that paper. But uh, yeah, any hope? <laughs> Okay. Yes, I wanted to add to that question, if it's possible. I mean, I know these are time use surveys, but it would be great. I don't know if you, we have any surveys in Latin America that would allow you to have uh, the effect of these childcare services, for example, on uh, the decision to work of women or the decision to separate, to divorce, and those type of things that gives much more freedom to women when they already have a child. Uh, I don't know if it's that's possible, but it would be interesting to find causal effects for that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, about the possibility of trying to, to find a, a causal effect, um, we were talking with Mariana, trying, we have to find some place where, where we can exploit the, the geographical expansion of the services and also that the survey is, uh, yeah, because these services, these uh, services are, as I said, they have like some quality problems. It's the only data that we have to explore this, but it, but in the case of Mexico, I think we may have some hope of, of trying to understand the expansion of a, of a, of a childcare facilities that uh, took place. And as they have, um, they have uh, time, you, they, they have service that we have many years of service and we may try to see if there is any variation, but but yes, the the idea is trying to, like to clarify, it, it's quite intuitive and obvious to clarify, to, to put numbers to this intuition that what is uh, operating there is the reduction in, in, in hours dedicated to, to childcare. And about the effects, for example, in, in, in in separation, maybe the same kind of, of thing uh, can can be applied to see uh, to see if, if because you would need panel data for trying to see if the if a, if some if a couple splits or if there is something of that, but it, it would be yeah nice. Um, so two questions. One was um, so you show that informality increases, um, and uh, so and also part uh, part time work increases. So does that imply that formal work, uh, participation in formal work decreases? Um, and second question is related to the, I think Chile and Mexico, in the graphs that you showed, uh, men sort of had a pre-trend where uh, the employment was increasing and then it flattened for men. Um, and so uh, one could interpret that as saying that they were incre increasing trend, but sort of um, due to the birth of the child, they stopped increasing. So how do you, uh, can you address the pre-trend or can you uh, do something for that? Thanks. Another question. Um, have you checked also, and I think it will be super interesting to add to your work, the comparison between single mothers and married mothers, because typically like, you know, household decisions, uh, and uh, say, regarding a bit with Raquel comment, there is this Van der Broek, Van der Broek, and I don't, I don't know how, how, how to say it, from the Fed of San Luis that he did actually like some, some stories about uh, married and single uh, gender gap, wage, wage marriage gap, and actually what he shows is say, for example, for the US, and I've seen that in Colombia also applies, married men are the highest earners in the economy while say this uh, gap is not for women between single and married. So, I mean, of course there is this idea, as, as Raquel was saying, it's not that males are not doing anything, it's, it's, it's true that they are maybe increasing the labor market participation a bit and having more full-time jobs. So, yeah, I, I think that, there, of course, there is a lot of household decisions going on, and as the, as the other, uh, partner here said, there is this trend that, that is, say, in a way maybe is saying that they anticipate, you know, and they are increasing the labor participation, then they decide. So, yeah, I mean.
Um, that was a really cool talk. Uh, just a question about your point that ideally you would want to, for the last part of your paper, see how the effect differs in different places with different gender norms, but there are only four countries. I was wondering if there's any way to exploit differences across regions within countries and like variation within countries in policy might be harder, but certainly within these kind of large countries, there's a lot of variation across places in gender norms and see if you could, if there's any way you could use the data to see how the effect differs across kind of places within countries consistent with some of your hypotheses and that gives you kind of more variation to work with. I mean, I think that it is interesting the anticipation effect that you're finding for men because it does differ from other countries and it seems to be there for at least some of the Latin American countries. So I wouldn't try to make that result go away or, or you know, I wouldn't try to hide that result. I would emphasize that result because everything else that you get is standard. So that at least gives you that. You know, on the regional variation, you know, Clavin, of course, has done now the U.S. and regional variation in gender roles across U.S. states, and then, you know, looks at the correlation of that with uh, the motherhood penalty. So I think you can do the same thing, but it has been done. So I'm just trying to, like, make you aware of how, what's going to be seen as original and what will not be seen. Uh, as original. And then the last thing is this motherhood penalty, which I just must say it. I really hate that people say, oh, this is the effect of motherhood. No, no, no. <laughs> what do you mean it's the effect of motherhood? These women are deciding, are making decisions, they're autonomous agents and make them in some context, but they're deciding to work less or to move to a different type of job or to have fewer hours or to stay at home. It's not like all of a sudden there's something new that we didn't know about called motherhood. Motherhood has always been there. That's why we're still around. And, you know, it's, it's, that's where most of the social norms um, have bite these days in the sense that it's not do you think it's okay for your partner to work or your, you know, your female partner to work. The question is really do you think it's okay for the, a woman with a young child to work in particular to work full time. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say because I can't stand this childhood, this uh, motherhood penalty anymore, or the child penalty actually. Thank you. I have just a, a brief question about the fact that you don't have effects in, in, in the two countries where you have the annual data and not in, in, in the case of hours of work and in other outcomes I don't remember. Yes, yes. Yes, and I, I was wondering about the the the, um, the weaknesses of the of yearly data to try to to show these things because maybe it's not that that they they there are no effects that, that you cannot gra uh, pick that with with two two waves of a of a panel. Okay, um, let me write this down because I'm going to forget. Um, so thank, thank everybody for so many questions and, and bright comments. Um, let me start um, by the end, <laughs> the other way around, because I remember them better, I think. Uh, one thing for yearly and monthly data, um, also the, and, and this, is, this answers many of the questions, sample data is really small. Uh, so um, it's not only that we have yearly data, for instance, for Uruguay, we have a really small sample because we have to, you know, stay with the mother, with mothers and fathers and, and so on and so forth. So for many results, we believe that the small sample is playing a role in finding non-significant results. The, the signs we get for the coefficients are always in the, let's say, right direction, but uh, we think uh, here sample size is playing an important role. And this connects with the with the correlations. I, I think if we are going to partition this into regions, we're going to uh, have very, very weak results. Um, as for uh, Raquel, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, great idea to to resolve this uh, father uh, effect, especially because I think the next generation of on this kind of works should focus more on men rather than, than women. And then on the other point of motherhood of uh, penalty, yes, of course, we all are aware of motherhood, but the 
even the fact that we find these correlations, right? Like policies really affect women are making different decisions in different contexts, even within the same region. So if women are making different choices, why are they doing them? Is that, you know, mothers are different in one country or in the other? No, basically they're facing different constraints. So maybe I think this is like the richness of this information, right? To try to understand what moves, what changes, what drives decisions, rather than the fact that the, the child exists. And of course, uh, we know this already. And this is a fact that is going to affect the whole family forever. Well, fortunately, because otherwise, why, why do we have children, right? But I think um, what we're really looking at is the way we can make families families, not women, families more free to choose and not to just have to choose whatever they have left to choose, right? So this, this is what like an important point. And then going to the uh, well, and the anticipation trend is a little bit on this. And um, as for, I think you said about the single and married, we, I think we didn't look into this uh, here. We did it for another country. Uh, we didn't, um, I don't remember the results, but it would be nice to explore this, this here. So thanks everybody for the Wonderful questions. Thank you. Um, so j um, a few questions. One was um, the added work worker effect. Um, in the Indian context also, when there is a distress, uh, there is something which we called as uh, reserve labor force, which is the women labor force, uh, women work when there is distress in general. Um, but uh, in India, we don't observe a persistence. So I just wanted to question the persistence in terms of if, uh, if you are if you are arguing that maybe gender norms change, then why do they not remain changed for the other generations after the shock? In terms of, say, uh, if unemployment is lower in a particular year and women enter the labor market, then for other years when unemployment has, incre um, has decreased, the gender norms again, again goes back to uh, they not entering the labor market. So uh, how does uh, that play out? Um, thanks. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if uh, there are any differences between the shops that were more affected by the shocks, uh, li like uh, in the crisis there might be some jobs that are more particularly affected, and uh, if there is different employment distribution across uh, genders for these shops, uh, and how this can affect the results. And also, if you have information like on the education of uh, those women who enter the labor market at uh, that time, do they continue uh, studying or they leave at all the education? Because like th there is also like this, uh, this uh, like if if it is a bad time, it's also difficult to find a job. So uh, many of them continue studying even if it was not uh, their initial idea. Like they don't find a job, so they go to university or something like that. So I was wondering if they do both things or they just leave education. Thank you. Um, it's building a little bit uh, on, on the previous question. Um, obviously, you can make the unemployment rate gender specific, but also. You know, it is well known that in Latin America, the unemployment does not respond to GDP swings as much as in developed countries, mostly because informality works as a buffer. So I was thinking maybe if you could introduce some element of the quality of the jobs available by thinking about informality and whether that would actually change a little bit the results that you obtain. Um, th thank you for this paper. It's really interesting. I was uh, thinking about two ideas. One is uh, if you see an heterogeneity with the shock, basically, you are, if unemployment is much higher than usual, right? This, if it's an added uh, worker story, I imagine that the FS could be different for, for that. And then uh, also if it's an added worker story, I imagine the households are able to smooth consumption better than others. I'm going to have different pred predictions here. So if, if you have in parts of the data set, for instance, I think in Peru, uh, you can observe the education of the parents or not. Uh, so if, if this is true, for instance, for the workers that are coming from highly educated parents, uh, perhaps they, they are reacting differently. Thank you.
so um, just a few people have touched upon it, the whole uh, substituting into education when work conditions are bad. And so what I would urge you to do is to not uh, change necessarily the year in which they enter the, the market, but ask to what extent could your results be driven by the substitution, particularly by women, supposing that's more elastic, which I'm not sure. But if it is more elastic, you know, how much of it could be driven by women deciding to go for more education, and then that would show up in their having different gender uh, role attitudes, and it would also show up in their employment at ages 27 to 30. And you would expect that effect to maybe be smaller for men if the elasticity is smaller. I know you controlled for average years of education in one of your robustness. I would actually make, might make that the main table because I don't know exactly how big your cells are. Are you controlling for average years of education of women, for the men separately, for example? You might want to do that, etc. And now I can take my chair roll and say, you can answer very, very few of these questions. So just choose which ones you want and we have to go on to the next speaker. Thank you all for the very interesting questions and suggestions and comments. Uh, the one about the, the gender norm, I think you, you say that uh, why they didn't change, but if, in fact what we are seeing is that the change in gender norms is during, uh, what we see is that the change occurs during adulthood. So it's not that the, the, the change happened before and the, the effect disappeared during adulthood. The, the, the effect is during adulthood. About then, uh, most of the comments were about uh, doing extra analysis. All of them are super interesting. Job types, we haven't analyzed. Same with informality. Uh, I, I like the, the comment about uh, distinguishing uh, whether women who enter were those who uh, were more educated or were those who were having more education at the moment of the shock. Um, yes, we can do the, the, the unemployment uh, higher or lower than the usual. Um, yes, parent education, I, I wonder whether we can do it with only one country, but it would be interesting, uh, definitely. Um, so yes, I think most of them are about doing extra work, and we are going to do it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Could you talk a little bit about what the mechanism is that you think is driving the allocation for, this is the wife's share, right? That's uh, the wife's, all, yeah, all the women, but it's the woman who's married to a husband, correct? No. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. All the women independently of whether they're like the mother or the wife. Yes. Or, or, yeah, or but, but not the children. No, we have six, seven, Okay, so I missed that part. Okay, so can you explain why you think that that would happen more in the patrilocal societies? Yeah. Any other questions? I think you're suffering from being the last talk of the day. <laughs> last talk of, of the day. Of the day. <laughs> um, yes, uh, first, uh, what we are seeing is the share of resources allocated to all the women in the household, all the men, and all the all the children. You said that before, and I yeah. didn't understand. <laughs> uh, actually, what what we can what we see also here uh, is that let me see. There. Are, oh, I didn't put it. Um, So um, what, what, what we have in, in the paper is also that we analyze this for the age of, considering the age of the women, and what we see is that in matrilocal societies, the, the resource shares for older women are even higher. Uh, the difference is even higher for older women, which can, can be explained for the, the lineality associated with uh, the inheritance and lineality associated not only with, with locality generally that, that go uh, a lot of times together. But um, considering the, the mechanisms, first, um, what we consider is that the transmission households, societies that were mainly patrilocal, tend to put men in a different position in terms of power within the household. 
First, because their families are there. The, 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 the new bride is moving to a place where their relatives are not there. They have, they, 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 their husband's family has, have a lot of monitoring uh, of their lives and sexual compare, uh, com behavior, etc. Also because uh, generally locality and, and lineality inheritance tend to come together, so um, lineality, the inheritance process of, of land can also be associated with more power to men uh, within, within the household. And the last, um, because the investment on, on Till girls and boys is very different in, in this uh, two context, as we saw in the morning. So uh, households, patrilocal households, tend to invest more in boys than than in girls, and uh, this end up in different uh, human capital and education, etc. So their power is could be expected to be different. My only problem is that it'd be nice to try to tease those out. Hmm. You know, is it look at the education difference? Yeah, yeah. We have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you all.